How's it going everyone? This is my blank. Welcome back to my channel where I'm going to attempt about the only thing left unexplored by me on the PC side of things and that's a custom hardline water loop. Naturally, I'm going to go into beginner friendly details in this one for, you know, everyone who wants to jump the normal learning curve steps and go straight to a hardline build. We will also have two parts up on this, so today you're watching it all begin. I don't know, it's just how the stars aligned or something along these lines that I've never dabbled much into PC custom loops. Actually my first and only custom loop was done back when quad cores were still top of the line technology around 7 or 8 years ago. And it most certainly wasn't a hardline loop but a regular flexible tubing one with only a CPU water block and a 240mm rad. All the stuff you see here was provided by AlphaCool for me to build a hopefully awesome custom loop cooled PC. I've got two rads here, one double 360mm and one regular 240mm, a pump and res combo, a CPU and GPU water block, we'll get to the details in a moment, and a ton of fittings, PTG tubing and support accessories like a heat gun, saw, silicon insert, etc. I found there's a lack of truly beginner friendly content on this or maybe it's just my searching skills but I feel there's a segment that wants to skip the normal learning curve steps like flexible tubing builds and go directly into the big boy stuff like hardline. So I'm going to do just that and we'll take it step by step. First of all let's talk about the system shall we? I'm going to build myself an awesome gaming PC powered by an Intel Core i7-7700K and a Radeon RX Vega 64 GPU. When I get the chance, I'm thinking of switching the 7700K to an 8700K, but until that time, this is the CPU powering my new main gaming rig. The motherboard you see here is the Asus Strix Z270F, which I've had only pleasant experiences with. The UEFI is pretty rich in options, just like our Gboards are, it has a great VRM, a lot of connect options and looks pretty damn good. I'll also be using my G-Skill 3600MHz RAM kit in this build and an EVGA Supernova G2 850W PSU to power everything. Alright, so first things first, before you delve any deeper into anything custom loop related, the most valued step here is picking a case. This is extremely important and will save you a ton of frustration. Luckily my Fantex N2 Pro M is just the right case for such a build. It's one of my favorite cases and can easily house dual 360mm rads, a pump or pump res combo and is very water cooling friendly. You really need a case that has water cooling as one of the main destinations when the manufacturer designs it really. The N2 Pro M is very versatile and there's very little that's in the way of building an awesome water cooled rig. With that out of the way, let's actually start building this guy, right? The first step is to mount the water blocks. You can't really do anything else before you have these on, so I started with the CPU water block, the Alpha Cool Ice Block XPX. This is a polished plexi block and will work on pretty much any Intel and AMD CPU from 2010 onwards. Installing it is very easy if you've ever installed even one aftermarket CPU cooler really. Anyway the first step is to fit these two metallic brackets on it. They slide into place on the block so there's no getting it wrong and when you join them they'll click into place thanks to the way they're designed. From here onwards, it's actually smooth sailing. Just place the tension springs, washers and nuts on the threaded mounting screws and fix the block by screwing them in a star-shaped pattern to the provided backplate. Obviously now, don't forget the thermal material beforehand. But anyway, they're fully threaded through, but it doesn't mean you should go all the way. There's sufficient pressure if you just hand tighten them around two-thirds of the total travel. Right, so CPU block is done, we're moving on to the RX Vega. I already had the Morpheus 2 cooler on my card, so if you want to see the reference RX Vega disassembly, check out my video. With the Nexos GPU full water block, you also get an awesome backplate, but that's the last step. First, you need to clean the die and apply Tim, covering everything, not just the Vega die and HBM modules. For the next step, which is attaching the thermal pads, I found AlphaCool's guide very well done and self-explanatory. 
You get 4 color coded bags containing pads with different thicknesses. The instructions tell you how big you should cut these and where to place them. A pair of scissors works just great here so I went to town and I bowled everything according to Alpha Cool's own measurements. There's pads for everything starting with MOSFETs, inductors, voltage controllers, etc. After you've done this just place the water block on top of the card and use the two screws to fix it into place. This is just so you can flip it over for the backplate mount since locking everything into place is done after you install the backplate. Same thermal pad treatment here and we're ready to screw everything into place for an armor clad Vega card. I really like the way it looks more so than other water blocks. It's like an exoskeleton for your GPU although it gets quite a bit heavier truth be told. Ok since we've got our water blocks on the next step is to put the motherboard in place and also fit the GPU on it. You need to do this for what I'm about to do next which is deciding where the pump goes. The Icebecher D5150 is a pump reservoir combo and I've chosen to go with an horizontal mount instead of the usual vertical mount. Using the supplied brackets I fixed it onto the PSU shroud with screws and nuts. Where and how you place it greatly depends on what look you're aiming for since there's multiple routes open for you. As for the reds, the 360 went up top, this is the Nexus XT45 full copper and the 240mm in the front, it is called the Nexus ST30 full copper. Clearly the XT45 is more advanced, having no less than 7 ports compared to the ST30's standard 2 ports giving you a lot of options as far as connections go. Just remember to plug up the ones you don't use, you get 5 metal plugs specifically for this. Ok so everything's already starting to look like a water cooled system but the most important step before you actually start doing anything is to sit back and clearly think through what tube routing options are, what impact they have on the look and functionality of other parts, ease of installation and access. If not all of these then at least looks should be a priority. What I mean by this is clearly decide and the following are going to be examples if let's say you want the 240mm red higher or lower. Do you want the ports facing up or down? Maybe down is more work. Are you going to use regular fittings or 45 degree ones? Or maybe 90 degree ones? I think you get the idea. Plan through very thoroughly, I don't think anyone emphasizes this enough. You don't want to discover something awfully wrong halfway done with your bends. For example, I'm thinking of using a 45 degree fitting on the 240mm rad which will let me stay clear of the RAM modules with the tubing for ease of access to the dim slots. And I want it to be pretty much in line with the CPU block outlet at the same time, although the water block inlet is not in line with the 360mm rad outlet, so more bends are required, but at least I know this beforehand and plan accordingly. There's a lot of details like using two 90 degree fittings on the pump, you clearly won't be able to screw them easily since they're hitting one another. So you have to fix them by screwing the mobile part of the fitting, then the compression sleeves are borderline touching one another. Plan through, experiment and properly think stuff out before you go forward. I recommend you also include a way to easily drain the system. Since my pump is horizontal and I'll tip the PC over when I'll fill it, the lowest point of the system, which is always the number one candidate for a drain location, is the rear port of the 360 RAD, the one in the front of the system. I went ahead and used 3 fittings, an extension, a double 45 degree and a ball valve. This allows me to keep it tucked away and extend it only when draining. Alright, now before I end part 1 let's have a quick look on fittings since it's paramount to doing all the previously mentioned and I want you guys to have a good understanding of them. I split fittings into two categories, compression fittings for tube mounting purposes and regular fittings which you'll first use on your blocks, rads, pumps etc. Let's start with the compression fittings first and here's 4 types of them with the first one being a regular fitting allowing you to fix rigid tubing to other items. I'm not going to go into details on how they work in this video, only the next one. We've also got 45 degree fittings as well as 90 degree ones depending on use cases. 
The last one is specifically for 90 degree tube to tube connections. Meaning that if you don't want to bend tubes, then you can use these fittings instead. It's the simpler and easier solution, though not so good looking in my opinion. These other ones are fittings for your rads, pumps, water blocks, whatever. We've got a regular cap to plug unused ports, this is a flexible extension, outer thread to outer thread, next one's a longer extension but outer to inner thread, and the last one is just the same but shorter. This one is a double 45 degree inner to outer thread fitting, it's what I use for my drain system. And this is a Y splitter, outer thread to double inner thread. On the tip of this ball valve is an outer to outer thread nipple connection and of course the ball valve itself used for draining purposes. Lastly this one's a T connection allowing you to branch your tubing. Again probably used more often for draining but I opted for not using it in the end. Since you now have a good idea about what each fitting is and does, about water blocks in general and pump risk combos, you know what to get if you're looking to build your own hardline loop and had zero experience with water cooling beforehand. As for me, well I need to start bending some PTG soon and get it into place of course, mount the fans and fill this bad boy up in part 2. Until that time, I want to see your questions in the comments down below and I will do my best to answer as many as I can. Meanwhile, thank you for supporting this channel by subscribing and don't forget, if you want to further support this channel's growth, check out my Twitter and Patreon pages linked in the description. See you in the next one everybody, bye bye.